So I've just come back from a thrift shop and I found something really cute that I couldn't leave behind. So I bought it. I know I'm addicted, but look at that. A little balloon for Dean, you know, my travel balloon. And it does have like an LED on it. So it's solar powered. It's so cute. I wanted it and I got it. It's Malacca. I'm gonna have to squeeze in here. Oh, well, hello. It's uh, Thursday. It's a uh, coffee Thursday. Last week, I promised you to try and do a weekly uh, coffee Thursday. Now, if uh, if you follow me, you probably have noticed that I've got this beard, and the beard goes up and down, and goes longer and shorter. And we're now at a point where the beard is so long that if I drink coffee, uh, the beard, the upper moustache, is full of coffee. So, what I do nowadays to prevent that from happening is I use straws to drink my coffee, believe it or not. Now I've been told that there are special mugs for moustache wearers, moustache, moustache wearers, um, so that you, you know, you keep that, uh, the upper lip basically clean. So I've got these straws now. Now, this is Europe, and I'm not sure about America or other countries, but plastic straws are now uh, forbidden, you know. So we've got these paper ones now. <laughs> and to be honest, I can't really describe the taste, but um, it doesn't really taste like it should do. But there you go. And after a while, the paper or the cardboard or whatever gets a bit soggy. Anyway, that's not what you're here for. You're here for my van life stories. And, uh, and if you're new to this channel, you might think like, um, where's the van? Um, I thought you were a van life channel. Um, good question. The van is outside. And uh, as you know, I'm taking a little breather here in Berlin. And I thought, why not? Why not unpack the van and just dump it all over somebody's uh, kitchen floor? thanks to my friend, uh, shout out to my friend even <laughs> for letting me do this. Um, so, so basically this is, well, this is nearly all I've got in the van. There is still some stuff in there. Now, if you follow my channel, you know, I've got this very, very small Ford Transit. Now in America, they would call that a, a micro camper. Um, but in Europe, that's, this is a medium size. There was once an event of micro campers in, uh, I think it was in Germany, and uh, I was not allowed in because my van was too big, which is really ridiculous because it's not that big at all. But there you go. Um, so this is all the stuff that I had in my van. And after my first four months, five months, I've discovered that actually a half of it I still haven't used. Um, so I now have to weigh up. Do I take it all with me again just in case with the next visit or with the next trip that I will use it? Or do I say like, no, this is way too much stuff. You know how the saying goes about, you know, too much clutter in your life leads to clutter in your head. And, and maybe that is maybe that saying is true and maybe I should declutter. I don't know about you, but if you watch a van life channel, I think you watch travel channels. And I think the, the old adage is really that basically when people travel, they always pack too much, be it in for like a short break, a weekend holiday or a longer two, three week uh, holiday uh, at the Spanish coast or the Italian Riviera. I think people always 
pack too much. And as you can see, um, I'm no different. I, I just pack way too much. And I always think like, I need this, but then in the end, I think there should be like, there should be a YouTube video, five essentials that you need on your van life, toothbrush, 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 and that's it. I mean, what more do you need? You know, you fill up the car and you, you, you drive off. But, you know, we're like, our brains are wired in such a way that we always think like, oh, we need this, we need that. And the weird thing is, because I'm the kind of van lifer who doesn't really go out in nature a lot. I like to s visit cities and towns and all that. And the fun thing I always find is when I'm in town, I'll find a thrift shop or a secondhand shop and I go rummage through other, other people's stuff. You know, one man's uh, rubbish is another man's treasure or something like that. And I always find something. I always think like, oh yeah, I could use that. Oh, that's really nice. I, I think that lamp here for like, I bought that for a Euro and it's a, you know, it's a USB uh, camping lamp probably cost like uh, 40 euros or whatever and I got it for a pound or for a euro and um, so I feel really really great when I find a deal so I keep on doing that and in the meantime I keep on buying stuff I have protein powder as you can see I always think like oh yeah after the gym I'll, I'll have a protein shake but I really never do I have way too many clothes more protein powder um what else have I got? I've got my camera gear. I have furniture, even backpacks for the camera. Um, there's so much stuff that I have and um, clothes. I mean, how many vests or wife beaters can you have? But I have, you know, baskets full of them. <laughs> it, while I was online, you know me, always online, always shopping. That's the weird thing. I bought this, these... Um, Ooh, what could that be, I wonder? Uh, I bought these, uh, you know, vacuum packs that I thought like, oh, you know, then everything looks half the size and then I feel like I'm not really bringing or taking so much stuff with me, although you are still taking stuff. Um, there are other things that I have, um, I've got with me now for seven months, like this... Uh, shower with battery supply usb shower and i still haven't used it and i'm wondering should i not leave it behind but then again i think like oh well maybe one day i'm out there and i just want to have a shower and then i can because i've got it i also have this uh, electronic or electric uh, fly squatter doesn't really do anything to be quite honest um you know <laughs> A normal squatter will do nicely, thank you. So uh, another one of these things that um, is not gonna go with me on the next tr trip, but I still got it. Oh, how many bamboo mats can you have, really? Ah, <sighs> boom. Hmm. <clears throat> It's really, really bizarre, but all we are ruled by things, apparently, and isn't that what was van life was all about, is finding new freedoms. And now I'm here, stuck with all this stuff, thinking of my old chains, you know, <laughs> stuff that is chaining me. So, yeah, okay, so that is gonna be my project for today, is actually rummish through all this stuff, and um, my goal is to just half it. Just keep half of it here. I'm sure my friend will be able to store it somewhere. And half of it I will take with me. I think that sounds like a good plan to me. And then, you know, if on the road I miss something, then, well, that's a, a lesson learned, I guess. But yeah, that's my plan for today. Uh, and yeah, like I said, that is really not really working for me. Maybe, uh, see, that's it. that is the thing. 
the coffee gets into my uh, moustache. Uh, maybe that's another thing that I need to do before um, I go on a longer trip, is go to a trusted barber, because I think I know a couple of people here that I can trust more than... Uh, than I did in Spain. Remember that story? Um, I'll link it up there if you want to check out my barber story in Valencia. I guess with life, there's a pendulum, isn't it? There's, there's like a pendulum swinging from left to right or from extreme, one extreme to another. And I think I have done the normal, you know, apartment life with normal amounts of stuff and then I discovered the minimalist guys on YouTube I think they're called the minimalists they made a Netflix documentary about minimalism and then I went all minimalist <laughs> and I chucked out everything and I found that um hmm, how shall I describe it it was very um rewarding. Is it rewarding? Um, it was very satisfying to get rid of stuff that you've had in the cupboard for years on end and never really, really used. You don't really have to go extreme with minimalism, I guess, really. I think the, uh, the question you should ask, or they tell you to ask yourself, is like, does this bring me joy? And if it still brings you joy, then you can hold on to things. And... Um, and that's the problem with buying stuff. It actually, you know, the buying itself brings me joy. But whether these things afterwards bring me joy, well, that's another question, really. So, so that's why um, you need to, you know, go through this stuff and get rid of it. If it doesn't bring you joy, continuous joy. That was great. But then I also started throwing away furniture and all of a sudden your your place started to look very sparse and, and friends would also mention it sort of like oh you know this is a bit bare this is a bit uh empty um you know and then the cozy feeling went away so the, then you swing the pendulum to the other side where you know we're at now is basically that in a small four transit it's packed to the rafters with little trinkets Tchotchkes. Oh. 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 <laughs> Did I just fall? That's my little bear. Um, so that's not good either. So I need to find like a little middle ground. I haven't found it yet, but let's hope that today um, doing a bit of a clean up job uh, will, will help me um, get that, you know, half the clutter out of my life. Someone in the uh, comments section mentioned that I should uh, make lists you know, a top five or a top 10. So I think for my next uh, Coffee Thursday, I will make a list of, uh, you know, a top five or a top 10 of um, things that, that I miss when I'm on the road, for instance. I mean, we're not talking about this kind of stuff, but also human interaction uh, or family or like uh, appliances, <laughs> as weirdly as that sound, or the internet, because every time I am in a place at a friend's or at my own place, I can use the internet and I can upload videos much more quickly than when I'm on the road. So little things like that. So I'm gonna make a top five or a top 10 of that. I'm also gonna make a video um, it's really bizarre because, um, you know, we're all on YouTube and I'm not sure about your feed, but lately um, I get this, you know, suggestions from YouTube about people saying like how they love YouTube and how YouTube has changed their life. And I want to make another video, how I hate YouTube and how YouTube change my life for the worse just to be awkward and just to be different 
So there you go. That's something to look forward to for my next Coffee Thursday. Now, people have also asked me which of the three routes are you now going to take? Remember, um, there were three options that I, will, I could possibly do. It was either a UK Ireland tour up to, you know, like Scotland and then taking a ferry to Dublin and, and so on. That was option one. Option two was the Scandinavia route uh, over um, Copenhagen, Malmo and up to Oslo in Norway. And then there was the... Um, the Switzerland-Austria route, which uh, was option number three. So people have asked me, like, have you decided on which one it's going to be? And it's going to be, drum roll, uh, it's going to be option number two. I think it is time to discover Scandinavia. I hear so many good and positive things about it, about nature, um, about the people who are supposed to be enormously friendly. Uh, apparently the Danish are the happiest people in Europe or in the world even. So I definitely want to go and check those out. And um, not only the weather, but also van life. You can free stealth camp, free camp, you can do that in, in the Scandinavian countries, no questions asked. So I want to explore that. I don't know if it's true, but it must be better than the UK and definitely better than Holland because they are very, very restrictive in, in, in where you can park and, uh, and lead the van life uh, lifestyle. So it's going to be Scandinavia. So by the next time we see each other, I'll be on the road somewhere towards Copenhagen. That's going to be the first um, Scandinavian city that I'll probably reach. And I hope you join me. Um, I still have like one video on Sunday coming out for uh, my second part of the Berlin stories. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, ge I'm getting all educational on my stories, aren't I? Maybe that's not really what people expect of a van life channel. But uh, yes, I, I was, or I am, in Schöneberg. And I think it's uh, there's lots to be said about Schöneberg. Now, I know that other people from Berlin who live in the east side of Berlin, they go like, yeah, but our, our area is very important too. And we have history and we have celebrities and all that. But I'm in in Schöneberg at the moment and there's a lot of history uh, you know and I, I can only like touch on a couple of things that uh, I find maybe worthwhile telling because um, you won't find those things in in your usual um, travel guide so so maybe uh, it's worth checking that I link it up here somewhere your part one and on Sunday I'll have the part two and then I'm on my way to sunny, let's hope it's sunny Scandinavia, and um, I'm going to have to learn some Danish, Swedish, or Norwegian. So, I'll check in with you next week uh, for another Coffee Thursday. Oh, I'm old now, I need to get up. <laughs> Yay. Oh.